All right, Tennessee Titans fans, who's ready to get depressed today? Because it is the top 10. We are ranking the top 10 most heartbreaking moments in Tennessee Titans history. Keep in mind, this is just Tennessee Titans, not Houston Oilers. Tennessee Titans history, and this is my list based on my opinion. There may be some things left off the list, maybe some things ranked too high in your opinion, too low, but this is my list of the top 10 most heartbreaking moments in Tennessee Titans history. Here we go. At number 10, this may be one that you forgot about. One of the only regular season games on the list. This is Christmas Eve. 2016 against the Jacksonville Jaguars where the Tennessee Titans got absolutely destroyed. The reason this is such a sad moment in Tennessee Titans history is because this is the week after Ryan Suckup kicked that game-winning field goal standing on the arrowhead at Arrowhead to get the Titans to 8-6 and six, and everybody thought not only were the Titans going to make the playoffs for the first time in a long time, but everybody thought they were going to win the division. They looked like the best team in the AFC South coming off of that Chiefs game. And then on Christmas Eve, they go to Jacksonville. Marcus Mariota breaks his leg. And the Titans get absolutely destroyed and eliminated from playoff contention in Duval County. A heartbreaking defeat on Christmas Eve, nonetheless. A very sad moment in Tennessee Titans history. Moving on to number nine. <laughs> everybody remembers this. Whether you're a Titans fan or not, everybody remembers this. New England Patriots in the snow. 59 to nothing. A Madden type score. 59 to nothing. The reason this makes the list, no, it's not a playoff loss. No, it's not some last second field goal or turnover or something like that. But this was a moment in Tennessee Titans history where you watched your team on television and said, this is, is rock bottom. This is rock bottom. How could it get any worse? The bad news is number nine is a two-parter because I got to give honorable mention to this game years later where the Titans lost 55 to nothing to the Green Bay Packers. And you can argue that this one was even worse than the Patriots lost because at least the Patriots lost was in the snow, which the Titans being from Nashville weren't used to playing in. But this Green Bay game was not in the snow. It was probably cold, but it was not snowing and the Titans still lost 55 to nothing. Another moment where, as you can see by our good friend there in the Titans Santa hat who became a meme because of this, it was rock bottom. Twice. Oh, terrible situation. Number eight, let's get into some playoff losses here. 2020, Baltimore Ravens at home. I'm just going to spoil this for you. The Ravens are on this list a few times. But this is the first time. 2020, Derrick Henry goes for 2,000 yards. We're hosting. We win the AFC South. We got the Ravens coming to town. And we laid an egg. I mean, we just laid a total egg. Offense couldn't get anything going. Settling for field goals. Punted when we were down by like four. Had a fourth and like one in Raven territory. And we decided to punt. What in the world? This was a tough one. Because I personally, I didn't think this Titans team quite had what it took to make it to the Super Bowl or anything because our defense was not very good. We had no pass rush. But we did have a home playoff game for the first time in a long time. And we just totally wet the bed on national television. And then the Ravens danced on our logo in the middle of the field. Don't think I forgot about that. That's at number eight. At number seven, we're sticking with the Ravens. We're sticking with home playoff losses to the Ravens. And I got to go back for this one because if you are a Tennessee Titans historian, somebody who's been a fan of the team for a while, you know about this game. The Ravens and the Titans. In the year 2000, the Ravens are up by a touchdown. The Titans are trying to drive late to tie the game. Steve throws a pass. 
little behind Eddie. Eddie has to kind of turn around, watch the ball go off of his hands into the waiting arms of Ray Lewis who runs it back for a pick six. Ravens go up by two scores, essentially ending the game. This was soul crushing because the Titans had just been in the Super Bowl. They were one of the teams everybody was talking about coming out of the AFC to go to the Super Bowl again. And the Ravens just completely stopped that in its tracks. And I believe this was the year the Ravens went on to win the Super Bowl. Oh my gosh. Just soul crushing defeat at the hands of the Ravens once more. We go on to number six. Oh my gosh. Every one of these just it, it takes me back to that moment when I watched it happen for the first time. Titans Patriots in the playoffs, divisional round, one of the coldest games in NFL history. And the Titans hung in there. This was the Patriots dynasty. This was Brady and Vrabel and all of them. They were on a roll. They had won Super Bowls. They were trying to win another. We're in the divisional playoffs in Foxborough. And the Titans are hanging with them. They're playing them so tough in this cold weather. And then at the very end, Steve heaves a ball up to Drew Bennett on fourth and forever. Titans down by three and Drew just drops it right through his hands and that ends the game what an absolute i mean the titans played him so tough they played him so well in one of the coldest games ever and the titans coming off of a win over the ravens in the wild card round and and then they just come up short here absolutely a, a soul crusher in Foxborough, and I'm pretty sure the Patriots went on to, of course, win the Super Bowl. We are moving into the top five. This is another classic. We're going back to the early 2000s, the AFC Championship game. This is one of my favorite seasons in Titans history. The Titans started the season one and four. Everybody wrote them off. They ended up winning the AFC South, being, uh, I believe, the two seed in the AFC, had a game against the Steelers in the divisional round that they won on a Joe Nedney <laughs> uh, uh, Music City mulligan. He deserves an Oscar for his performance in that one. They beat the Steelers. They get to the AFC Championship game and oh I was certain. My 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 10 year old self was certain that the Titans were about to go to the Super Bowl but it was not to be. The Raiders who were coached by Bill Callahan by the way who is now in Nashville, coaching the offensive line with his son, who is the head coach. Um, they they had Rich Gannon. They had all these studs on offense. They had a great defense. And the Raiders ended up taking care of the Titans, who played tough, played hard. Steve McNair obviously had like 10 billion injuries because he always did. But the Raiders got the win and went on to get absolutely embarrassed by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the Super Bowl a couple of weeks later. But, I mean, the AFC Championship, anytime you get that close – to the Super Bowl, come up short. It's a heartbreaker, and you can see how heartbroken Steve was walking off the field right there. We are moving on to number four. Some people say this is too low. This is the AFC Championship loss to the Kansas City Chiefs, the year that the Titans went 9-7. 2019, they went 9-7. and seven. They snuck into the playoffs, and they went on a run. And they made it to the AFC title game, and they were leading... They were winning 10 to nothing at one point and then 17 to 7. They were hanging right there. And then we all know what's going on in this picture. The Patrick Mahomes run. You know what happened. The Chiefs went into the locker room at halftime up by four. It felt like they were up by 40. Just felt like the Titans were never going to get back into this game after that touchdown run. Even though they had their chances, but I mean the Chiefs were. You know, they had Tyreek Hill, Kelsey, Mahomes. They were they were going to be the team of destiny. And the Titans, you know, the only reason it's not even higher than four on this list is because I was just so proud of that team to go nine and seven, sneak into the playoffs, end the dynasty in Foxborough, go beat the Ravens on the road, crush the Ravens on the road, who was the number one seed, and then and then this game like it was heartbreaking, yes, but there was still that silver lining of, man, this team surpassed any and everybody's expectations. So that's why it's not any higher. But at number three on this list of heartbreak, it's the Ravens again. This time in 2008. You may have forgotten this one. But this was the 2008 season where the Titans went 13-3. and were the number one seed in the AFC, got the first round by, 
home field throughout the playoffs. Chris Johnson's there. Kerry Collins is the quarterback. We had a stout defense, and this was one of those years that you could look at and say, hey, this might be it. This might be it. Because if the NFL, if I remember correctly, in 2008, that season was very wide open. It was like, man, you know, the Patriots aren't around. Who's going to be the team to, like, go to the Super Bowl from the AFC? And the Titans were the number one seed. And they were beaten by a rookie Joe Flacco and the Baltimore Ravens at home. Tell me if you see a trend here. A lot of the heartbreak comes at the hands of the Ravens. Titans turn the ball over 10 million times in this game, in the red zone most of the time. Ravens hurt Chris Johnson. We all know the story of that. And the Titans just could not get out of their own way. And the Ravens, I believe, went on to lose to the Steelers in the AFC Championship the next week. But that was a heartbreaker. Number two. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. Some of you thought this was going to be number one, didn't you? The reason it's not number one is because this is my personal list and I was like six years old when this happened. So although I do remember it and I remember being sad about it, I was six years old. And that's a lot different than if this had happened when I was, you know, 20 or 25 or something like that. But I was six years old. Obviously, I remember this image. And to this day, this is an image that still haunts us, no matter how old you were, because this was the Titans within a yard of, well, tying the Super Bowl. We have to remember, people act like the Titans would have won if they had scored. No, they would have tied the game, and the game would have gone to overtime. But, nevertheless, the Titans would have been in overtime of the Super Bowl with a legitimate chance to win and all the momentum. And Steve McNair, who was playing out of his mind. Um, obviously... It doesn't matter if you were alive. It doesn't matter whether you were a kid like I was. This is a heartbreaking, haunting image because we still don't have a Super Bowl to this day. And that's the closest we ever came right there. So even though even though I was so young, and some of you may not remember this like me, uh, but it was still, it, it lives in Titans history as one of the most heartbreaking moments. But at number one, <sighs> To me personally, when I started putting this list together, I already knew what number one was right off the bat. And it was this right here. Divisional round against the Bengals just a few years ago. I've never had a loss affect me the way this one did. Ever. I've never had a loss in a game that left me feeling like this. Like, trying to go to sleep that night and just staring at the wall. It felt like this was the team. I mean, I remember saying before this game, I was like, this is the best chance we've had. This is the best chance we've had it, since that 2008 season where we were number one seed. My dog even knows about it. You hear him out there. It was like, this is it. Like, this is the team. Derek's back. We got healthy A.J. Brown. We got a healthy Julio. We had the bye week. We had home field advantage. We had a pass rush that was insane. We had a defense that was insane. Everything was clicking at the right time. The city was going crazy. The stadium was shaking. And three interceptions later, some terrible play calling along the way. Missed opportunities. But even with all of that, we're right there at the end of the game. We've got a chance. We're tied. Less than a minute. Driving down the field. We're about 25 yards away from field goal range to host the AFC title game. There's a wide open Anthony Ferkser standing in the middle of the field for an easy 10-yard gain. And we know what happened. Ball tips up in the air. It's up there for five minutes. Bengals get the interception, and a little bit later, they're celebrating the fact that they were going to the AFC title game and later on to the Super Bowl. This, to me, is the most heartbreaking loss I have experienced as a fan. Even more so than Super Bowl 34 against the Rams, because like I said, I was just, I was six years old. But this affected me in a way to where I... I, I had to get over it when we hired Brian Callahan. I had to be like, okay, I'm going to let bygones be bygones, bro. But I'm still mad. 
this was, when you think about it, the peak of the Vrabel era. It's all downhill from here. Traded AJ, you know, got rid of so many of the uh, weapons. I mean, Julio was never back. Um, the pass rush was still there, but just without AJ, Derrick Henry just getting older. Tannehill was never the same. Um, and that that was kind of it. I mean, that this is what led to all of it when you think about it. And so I hope with a new coach and a new era, we can get past these demons right here. Let me know if there are any moments that I left out. Please like and sub and comment below. Let me know if you would rearrange these a little bit for you personally. If there was something I left off, something ranked too high, too low, let me know. Tighten up, everybody. God bless you. Bye.